very good evening and welcome to State of Business, our television's prime time business news bulletin. I'm Adusha Palakumar. Let's take a look at the headlines first. <music> South Asian Working Group meeting on sanitation to be held in Sri Lanka. And GMOL adjures external powers holding back executive powers of the government on CITEM issue. Now the story is in detail. The 10th Intercountry Working Group meeting for the South Asian Conference on Sanitation is scheduled to be held from 11th to 12th September in Colombo. The two-day meeting will be held under the patronage of City Planning and Water Supply Minister Ralph Hacking. Representatives from the SARC region, UNICEF and World Bank and the primary financial supporters of the sanitation facilities will also participate at the meeting. The South Asian Conference on Sanitation will be held in Pakistan next year. We have the South Asian Conference on uh, Sanitation, which takes place every two years in uh, different parts of the South Asian uh, region. We are hosting the inter-country uh, working group on the 11th and 12th in Colombo. This working group is responsible for the general guidance as to how the conference proceeds. So since the next year, it will be hosted by Pakistan. We'll discuss all the nursery uh, operational issues concerning the uh, targets to be reached and uh, the methodologies and modalities adopted by different countries and uh, new initiatives aimed at uh, reaching the sustainable development goals, uh, particularly sustainable development goal six which deals with water and sanitation. In that regard, we have a very proud and envious record when it comes to the rest of the South Asian countries. We have reduced open defecation to basically just 1.4%, and open defecation will be totally eliminated, hopefully by 2020. Then we would have uh, virtually reached safe sanitation targets uh, almost to 100%. Of course, uh, there are issues pertaining to shared and unimproved uh, sanitation facilities uh, which needs to be resolved in the meantime, uh, which again we are uh, working towards it. And we have a variety of different programs aimed at elevating the necessary uh, uh, benchmarks to a very satisfactory level which we are very confident in, in achieving. The rest of the countries have made a request from us to host uh, the permanent secretariat in Colombo or in, in Sri Lanka. So we have uh, agreed to do that and um, from, um, we have now set up a very temporary secretariat in Colombo. We will soon be shifting it to a permanent board in, in Kandy where we are going to set up a, a massive laboratory for water research funded by the Chinese. Uh, we will have a separate secretariat set up there which would deal with um, sanitation for the entire South Asian region. So that will uh, be an added recognition that the country gets in, uh, for our achievements in reaching sustainable development goals. The Government Medical Officers Association convened a media conference today concerning the issues that have been arisen due to the appointment of the Special Committee on Resolving Sitem Issues. Addressing the media, Dr. Samantha Ananda alleged that external powers are holding back the executive powers of the government in giving final verdict on CITEM issues. As we know, this CITEM issue is not confined to the medical sector at, uh, at this moment. It, is, it has gone to a national level, now it is a national issue. Why we say it is a national issue? Because the executive power in this country is trying his level best to solve this problem and the, the main parliament power, the prime minister of this country is trying his level best to solve this problem. But we see a uh, some power above this both executive powers are acting against uh, giving a solution for this matter. So therefore we see that some power is controlling this country's executive power as well as the power of the parliament. We see some kind of problems in this committee because we don't see the SLMC is represent this, this committee. SLMC is the supreme body which is answerable to the medical education of this country. Head of this committee is, is represented by a minister who has whatsoever knowledge, who has no knowledge 
about the medical medical education so we have a great doubt whether amicable solution whether the patient's right will be protected by the solution that are going to come from this committee the annual Ray Vijayawardena's memorial lecture was held last evening at the Institute of Engineers in Colombo. Dr. Sanjeev Vijayawardena, the founder and CEO of WSO2, delivered this year's lecture themed Nobody to Leader Achieving Global Leadership with Software. The memorial lecture was organized jointly by the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka and Ray Vijayawardena Charitable Trust a charitable organization established for the promotion of the vision and ideas of late Dr. Ray Vijayawardena. The late Dr. Ray Vijayawardena's memorial lecture was first held in 2011 and this is the seventh lecture. The public lecture was attended by a large audience comprised of IESL members, special invitees, members of diplomatic missions and family members, relatives and friends of the late Ray Vijayawardena. I hope I'm able to give you some perspectives about the software industry and what the possibilities are. And first of all, let me uh, take a moment to thank uh, the Ray Vijayawardena Foundation, the Trust, uh, for inviting me. Uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be here. This is a name I've heard of from from the time I was a child. I had read about him. I didn't know him, of course. Uh, and so it's an honor to be giving this talk. He was a highly educated person. He got three degrees as an undergrad, uh, three undergraduate degrees in education, in agriculture, in mechanical engineering, and aeronautical engineering. Right. That is pretty amazing. And then went on to do some, uh, I think an MBA or whatever it was called at the time at Harvard Business School. So, uh, and, you know, he didn't go to some little university. He went to top-notch schools, Cambridge and Harvard, and, an extremely educated uh, person and did all kinds of things. Uh, his first invention that I had also heard about when I was a kid, when I was growing up, uh, I'm only 25 years old, just can't see you can figure that out yet, uh, was that about this little hand tractor thing. The thing that bothered me, to be honest, about that invention was that the commercialization of that was not done in Sri Lanka. Uh, I think it was in the 1950s or 60s that he came up with the idea and, and I, being a mechanical engineer and with his background, I'm sure he made one. Uh, he took it to UK and it was commercialized and the value of the invention was derived by UK, not by Sri Lanka. Uh, so my interest is in the opposite direction. My interest is in figuring out how do you make Sri Lanka to be the place that owns the value, not creates the stuff only. Because creating the stuff is hard, without a doubt, but it's not enough. Because if you create the stuff and the money goes out of the country, that's no good for us. We need to figure out a way to give, keep the money in the house somehow. So that's what my whole theme of the talk is about. My objective is to give you guys a, an understanding of what's possible in the software industry and how software, incredible opportunity for world domination. But world domination in the sense of leading the world with software, especially with what's going on where the technology is evolving now, anyone, anywhere can become a world leader. The memorial lecture will be broadcast in its entirety on our television. Log on to the our television Facebook page for more information. Let's take a look at more news after this break. Welcome back. DFCC Bank expanding its presence across the country opened its latest fully-fledged branch in Moravaka last evening. The ceremonial opening of the new branch was attended by Lakshman Silva, CEO of DFCC Bank PLC, as well as several senior banking officials and members of the local community. The new branch will offer an array of services such as quick access to current and savings accounts, fixed deposits, loans, pawning services, leasing facilities, NRFC, RFC accounts, credit cards and remittances. This will be the 139th branch of DFCC Bank. The Royal College Rugby Advisory Committee along with corporate support have awarded its triumphant first XV rugby team to tour New Zealand for matches and coaching stints with top All Blacks coaches in New Zealand. The 10-day tour will commence from today. During the tour, 36th member contingent will play two games against schools in Auckland and Northland and participate in camps conducted by New Zealand coaches along with sessions strengthening conditioning experts. The teams will also have sessions with former All Black coach Sir Graham Henry as well as former All Black greats Sir John Kirwan and Joey Stanley. 
During the season, uh, we became the overall league champions. We won all other trophy games except just one. And we also won the blue ribbon of school rugby. We have to collect number of techniques and number of uh, skills by participating uh, this tour. So we have given this opportunity to the team players how to play rugby in the world level and how to uh, achieve all the targets and how to achieve all the uh, other Victoria, uh, winning uh, spirit with following all the techniques and other uh, guidance uh, which we can give for them in a uh, world-class level. Let's take a look at stocks after this break. Welcome back. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 13.68 points to close at 6,375.86, and the SP SL20 Index gained by 3.80 points to close the session at 3,674.58. The turnover was 688.1 million rupees and 20.1 million shares were traded. Next is Forex Rates. Now we have a dealing room update for the week. The Sri Lankan rupee ended marginally weaker on Wednesday as imported dollar demand outpaced selling of the US currency by exporters and banks. The spot rupee trading at 152.70 to 152.80 per dollar this morning. The forward premium slightly declined this week across the board. The one month premium was hovering at around 70 to 80 levels, while the one year premium was hovering around 980 to 1020 levels. At the weekly Treasury bill auction held this week, the three-month bill was not offered, while the six-month bill decreased by seven basis points to 9.23%, and the one-year bill decreased by nine basis points to 9.58%. The overnight call money rates and repo rates traded around 8 to 8.10% levels this morning. The liquidity in the market was at a surplus of around 24 billion rupees on Thursday. The Treasury bond rates in the secondary market were relatively active this week. The four-year bond maturing on the 15th of December 2021 was trading at 10.25 to 10.35 percent, while the nine-year bond maturing on the 1st of August 2026 was trading at 10.65 to 10.75 levels this afternoon. With that, we wrap up State of Business for the week. Join us tomorrow with this roundup at 7 p.m. Until then, take care. Good night.